writing slow was the writing slow. Things down. I'm gonna put it here. There we go. We're gonna put them all here. Ooh, fun. I don't know if you can actually see them though. Can you? I feel like my head is in the way. We'll put them both over here. Because who really knows? With Jan setting things up, she never does things the way she's supposed to. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with a review video for The Curse of the Sphinx by Ray Wagner, and I'm also going to be reviewing the second book in the trilogy, which is Demigods and Monsters. I received these two books as part of Booktube Tours. Booktube Tours is a club that's run by Grace over at Loving Dumb Books, and basically it's where booktubers are given free books in exchange for their honest review. It's a lot of fun, and I highly recommend becoming a host. I'll leave the links down below if you guys want to check it out and sign up. Do it. So much fun. If you guys look in the description, there's going to be giveaway links for both of these books. Which is super awesome because who doesn't love free books? Just saying. Also, there's going to be a Facebook party with Ray Wagner sometime this month. I'm not 100% sure when it is. I will leave all the links and information down below in the description if you guys want to check it out. Totally join us for the Facebook party. It's going to be super lit. Look at me using a the terminology of all the young kids these days. <laughs> first, I'm going to review the first book in the series, which is Curse of the Sphinx by Ray Wagner. And I ended up giving this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I did enjoy it, although some parts of it really did not sit well with me, which is why I gave it a lower rating. This book follows Hope Nichols, who has been on the run for her 17 years of life. She and her mother have moved across the United States ever since she was born, and they don't stay in one place for longer than a couple of weeks. She doesn't exactly know who or what is hunting her, but she knows that staying in one place for too long is not safe. Then one day her mother is taken from her and she finds herself alone in the world. She doesn't know who she's able to trust and she ends up moving again to a small town in Goldendale where she starts a brand new school and she meets a boy named Athen who is a cute boy who catches her attention. My absolute favorite, favorite part of this book is how the Greek mythology is mixed into the modern world. I personally love Greek mythology. I took a course in it this year for university and it was my favorite class. I got like a 97 in it. I was obsessed with it. It's so much fun to learn about. And everything in the book was like accurate to what I learned. So you could tell that Ray Wagner actually did like a lot of research in order to write this book. I think that there should have been more of a backstory towards the curse of the Sphinx and Hope and her mother's lives because at times I was kind of confused with what everything meant and how the curse had come to fruition and how it was fulfilled and things like that because all we get is the curse at the beginning of the book and then it's not really explained any further. The romance in the book f between Hope and Athen was kind of forced in my opinion. It didn't seem like they were like genuinely connected at all but I did really like that they hated each other at the beginning of it. It was really funny the snarky comments that they made to each other. And we all know I hate insta love so I was very happy that it was not an insta love at all. A lot of the characters I didn't really feel emotionally invested in and I wasn't really all that into their story. Kristen really bothered me. She was like the typical mean girl, snarky, bitchy high schooler. She basically thought she was the queen of the world and everybody had to bow down to her and just I do not like people like that. Just ugh. So I did not like her at all. I loved Hallie who was Hope's best friend and I loved Mr. Stanley. He was the butcher and he always had little riddles for Hope which I love trying to figure out. Which I never figured out because your girl ain't that smart. But once they told you the answer I was like that makes sense. Wow. At times I did find the story a little bit slow and there wasn't that much action and when action did take place it was just kind of like okay it's over in two seconds. But the writing style made it very easy to get through these parts and overall it was a very quick and enjoyable read. So those were my thoughts on the first book, Curse of the Sphinx, and now on to the second book, which is Demigods and Monsters, also by Ray Wagner. I liked this book so much more than the first. I think that Ray's writing style improved so much, and her pacing was so much more exciting, and I loved it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book still follows Hope, who is still 17 years old. Two days and one night when Apollo's 
power is the strongest, hope still becomes the sphinx, and she has decided that she is going to break the curse. So she goes and visits Artemis in a conservatory, and she gives her an offering. Artemis basically tells her that she needs to go to the Olympian Library and do some research on curses, so she goes into a conservatory under the false pretense that she is actually a demigod. I definitely enjoyed this book a lot more than I enjoyed the first book. I didn't find it to be slow or boring at all like I did with the first book. I think the pacing was definitely more exciting and thrilling and there was a lot more action packed into this part of the story. Athen is back and I still don't know how I feel about him. I like him but at times I'm kind of like rolling my eyes at him and the things that he does I'm like okay stop. And then there's Zan who I can't decide if I love with a fiery passion or hate with a fiery passion. He's so snarky and just everything he says rubs you the wrong way but you want to love him so badly. It's the weirdest feeling ever. So the love triangle between the three of them is just... it was interesting. It was like a Bella Jacob Edward thing because the two boys hate each other but then like Hope's like, I don't know who I like. I might like you but I might like you. I don't know where my feelings are. I definitely think that I'm team Zan, though, if I had to pick. Zan is my man. That kind of rhymed. A little bit. I definitely enjoyed Hope as a main character more in this book. In the first book, I found her to be a little bit whiny and kind of annoying, but in this book, she's definitely more headstrong and tries to do things for herself, and she sticks up for herself, which I loved. Dion, 100% my favorite character. He is the god of wine, and he's just so funny. He's drunk all the time and the things that come out of his mouth actually had me laughing. I loved him so, so much. Again, the Greek mythology in this book made me so happy. There were new characters introduced, which I loved because a couple of them I had actually never heard of, so that was really interesting to learn their backstory. The ending of the book set up very nicely for the third book. It's not titled yet, so I don't know when it's supposed to come out, but there is supposed to be a third book, so I'm very excited to see where Hope's story leads. Alright guys, so that was my review of The Curse of the Sphinx and Demigods and Monsters by Ray Wagner. I will leave all the links down below to the booktube tours and the giveaways for these two books. Also, if you guys are interested, check out the Facebook party that we're going to have. I don't actually know the date as of now, but when I find out, I will leave it down below. You guys should totally join us, it's going to be so much fun, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.